everyone, welcome to episode 3, calling it that now, of Metroid Zero Mission. In the last part, Kraid nearly kicked my ass. That was the first thing that's happened since I first played this game. And I'm in... And I seriously mean that. I, Ever since my first playthrough, I've never gotten that close to death on him. I guess Murphy's Law or LP Curse is finally starting to take its effects on me. And wow, I... I, it's been a while since I watched this, and I forgot I failed at the speed booster there. Yeah, for the speed booster, which we got at the end of the last part, you just have to run a certain distance, which is different from its original version in Super Metroid. In this infusion, and pretty much any Metroid game after this where this will appear, you have to run a certain distance for it to activate. In Super Metroid, there was a run button that you had to hold down. So yeah. <laughs> That's one weird little change they did, but then again, the Game Boy Advance doesn't have that many buttons on it. They use every button enough in this game. Whoa, that was weird. Yeah, must probably nothing. Sorry, I thought I heard a sound outside my window. Anyway, this this room is actually directly linked to the one above it. But if you fall down to lava above, it, you'll end up in that waterfall. And, surprisingly, you know, I almost never fall down it. Well, you'll see in a couple of seconds. Come on, come on! No, no, no! That was the first time that's happened to me in three years. Also, with the speed booster, we can do the shine spark. How you do that is that you press, you crouch down with the, when you have the speed booster activated. Then you can jump and hold any direction to go in that direction. You know, for the diagonals, you have to use the uh, diagonal aiming uh, button, and for you can just let it go to go hard at vertically. And anyway, here we're gonna be getting an energy tank. This, how you get it? Speed boost, jump. I'm not sure why that took me so long to figure out my first playthrough. <laughs> then again, when I first played this, that was the year 2004, I think. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think 2004. I'll check. Yeah, 2004. Wikipedia. Thank you so much. And another cutscene. You know, it took me a couple of years to realize this, but that's actually a small little fleet of space pirates. And, Mr. Ridley, how are you doing today? I'm totally not going to have a psychological freak out on you in this game. No, that's going to be saved for the one that, where the storyline's actually on the main focus. Hello, looks at Other M. I liked Other M, actually. A lot of people don't seem to mind it, but... People, I will be pointing out one thing later when we fight Ridley next part about the psychological freakout that she had another M. Anyway, now we have to go to Norfair again. Norfair and Brinstar are by far the areas you're going to be in the most throughout this game. At this point, we're going to be leaving Norfair, going to Brinstar. And heading back to Norfair within five minutes of each other. <laughs> eh. Oh well. Yeah, I'm not part of Nintendo, I can understand why they did this. I mean, they're just trying to remake the original. <laughs> now, I still haven't gotten the energy tank up there. I, like, I really hope I remember to. <laughs> Because I don't wait, uh, I probably won't, because I don't think, because I'm trying to make this as, shor as short of a playthrough as possible. Like, as a speed run almost. So, I don't think I'll ever be coming back this way, so I'm never going to get in that energy tank, because the game never brings us back this way. You can, uh, that block right there, you can, I think, bomb that. I do the bomb or super missile. No, it is bomb. To uh, get to a missile, and I, there's a way with the speed boost bolt morph ball that you can get the. Uh, Super missiles really early, like an entire for uh, me an entire part earlier than I should, but I don't remember how to do it. I've done it. I've done it a couple times though. Hmm. 
But man, I will say this, playing through this again, I see, I, in the past few years I've played through Metroid 1 more, the original Metroid, more than I've played through Zero Mission. And I'm so glad they fixed it, there's the copy-paste thing, because there are so many copy-paste areas in the original Metroid, it's not even funny. <laughs> Whereas in this, every area is unique to itself, besides the same rooms. That's, anyway, instead of having to do all that platforming, now that we have the speed booster, we can, well, shine spark! Ho! Ha! <laughs> I love doing that. <laughs> Anyway, in here we have to do another speed boost chain, but we need to do that. Into the room left, there was another green door. Yeah. I was trying to remember if I could get into that little part earlier, but I just then I remember there were the, the power ups not down there. I haven't played this game in over a year, all right. <laughs> I have my excuses. Now we have these enemies, which are pathetically easy, but I still wonder what the hell they are. I mean, with, I can understand a lot of the stuff in Metroid, but, uh... Anyway, now we get the high jump boots. What they should do should be self-explanatory, although they also give you the ability to jump in morph ball form. Actually, speaking of... I'm not sure why this is popping into my head right now, but... There are actually a few bosses that were not in this game's original coding. Well, they weren't in the original coding, but... Eh, that were removed. And one of them is actually one of the bosses from Super Metroid, Krokemeyer. Uh, I should be... If I'm, uh, if I'm not lazy, which I probably will be, I probably will put a picture up of him. He was actually originally supposed to be in this game, but was taken out probably for reasons of time constraints. But he was actually supposed to be here in Norfair again, like he was in the it's back in Super Metroid, but I have to wonder why. He's not suited to the environments at all. You know, the, it's hard to explain. I completely agree with the Metroid Wiki on what they said there. Anyway, back to Brinstar! to get a power up that you can actually sequence break and get earlier than you can should that you and you're supposed to. And it, actually that power up will show up in certain cutscenes if you have it for them. Like that like the whatever this power up is this power up which I'm not going to name. Uh, if you have it before the Cridly Cridly the, the Craid boss fight, it Samus's suit will be in uh, that suit. Giant Spark Ho! Yeah, I'm gonna be doing that from now on. Mm -hmm. If you, if you guys know who that's a reference to, props. You guys know some really good, and you're probably subscribed to one of the best co-commentary chat groups in, on YouTube. I'm not talking about us, considering we're uh, uh, we're uh, we're not that popular, considering you guys are our only subscribers, really. But one day, maybe we'll be as one day, maybe we'll be popular. <laughs> we'll see what happens. That hurt. Ow! I just banged my toe on the desk. Ah. Okay, that pain wore off perfectly. And now that we have the high jump boots, we can venture into this area of the that we weren't able to before. Which, if, if you use the wall jump, you can sequence break the two to get into. And now we have this area, or this text, which, and now we have these, this area whose blocks and terrain are completely unique to this little part of Prince Star. I'm trying to think if this is a reference to, and if this is reference to any other point, because. Thinking about it, this considering where Criteria is, this could be the wrecked ship from Super Metroid. But then again, you don't even get the, and I shouldn't not have destroyed that enemy because you can wall jump up that, but I'm not able to. Did I screw myself over? Yes, I did. <laughs> and I, I'm not trying to get a secret, like a special item or anything. This is the way you have to go to get this item. That, uh, chose a statue pointed you to. And freeze him, and there you go. <laughs> and 
And this is where we learn these little mites that have been troubling since the beginning of the game are the only things that can destroy whatever these orbs are. Oh, that's right, I forgot I ducked to the music there. <laughs> Who would have thought that those things would... I'm not sure what... I know those things are supposed to be like bugs, but seriously, what are those little ball things? We never learn. And actually, up right up here, I make a nearly fatal mistake. Well, then, um, by the fact that I would have had to left it, leave the room. Luckily, but then I but actually thinking about it, I could have just walked right next to when they would have gone on. The mites would have gone onto the thing itself anyway. And now we get the vari the varia suit. Why did I almost say varia? This is this suit prevents you from heat damage and um, immunity from the first type of lava. Which, oh, and there's, oh, wait, no, the second type is acid. Hmm, doesn't look like it in this game. But now, unlike most Metroids, and by that I mean this is the only other one besides the, or, the original Metroid, it doesn't give Samus her iconic shoulder pads that she has in every game. But we'll be getting those eventually. And energy tank, yay. Surprisingly, I'm renewing the max amount of energy tanks I have at the, towards the end of a new of a game. At least my speed runs. And uh, actually, besides endings, there is one other thing that uh, getting 100% influences, but we won't be getting to that until the final part, which actually might be part seven, if it goes the way I'm hoping it does. Yeah, it should end up like that. I'm thinking about what's coming up in the game. Hmm. Anyway, for this little puzzle, if you could call that, you need to ro roll up, gather these mites, and not bomb them off, and bring them down here. That took me forever to solve my first playthrough. And why do we need to do that? Because, the, for one thing, the path up there is obstructed by what, and by what you may ask. I chose a statue. And this one sends us to... Right over there. <laughs> what is over there? We shall see, Mr. Purples. Oh, that's two other... That's two references to other YouTube people today. Hmm. Let me get this husband eh. And now we're army, we're right near that m map room. And I went in the wrong room. God damn it, that happens to me every playthrough. Now right here... It, I, I, I don't remember why I went into this back into this room. I think it's because I wanted to show off at the map room, but then I remembered I will, there will be one to be shown off later. Now, if I remember correctly, this event is the last time we'll ever be in those groups of rooms. There's no need to go back there ever, unless you're 100%ing. So, let's... Actually, one question. What are those rocks? They look like the little Chozo statue head. They kind of remind me of the, of the melee or an N64 stages for Metroid. Uh, Smash Brothers. I have not played Melee in years since my disc died. Uh, nah, but, let's, but let's not talk about Metro, um, Smash Brothers when there's Metroid to be talked about. So, who was hoping there's actually going to be another Metroid game on the DS, or at least the 3DS? Because I rather liked Prime Hunters, and I want to see them should do something like that again. If not, maybe a 2.5D platformer, maybe a 2.5D remake of a little compilation collection of this, of Zero Mission, Metroid 2, Super Metroid Infusion. That'd be kind of cool to see. Shine Spark! Ho! Oh. <sighs> So yeah, for this part you just really have to redo this little puzzle part, if you can even call this a puzzle. Because for me, puzzles are like Professor Layton, and Zelda, and Okami.
and I actually made a very stupid mistake. I felt I went in that hole when I was not supposed to. I don't. I, I guys, seriously, it's been forever since I last played this game, so I have my excuses. Luckily, they put that there. I guess just for people who did that accidentally. Yeah, Nintendo, while they, while people seem to hate Nintendo, they are some smart skin developers, in my opinion. And look at it like this, people who hate Nintendo. Without Nintendo, you wouldn't have your PlayStations or your 360s. So technically, these guys are the reason you're gaming, even to, no matter what. You, you can't deny their greatness. And now we have this little room here, which is another little speed booster puzzle, but at the same time, it's kind of the misadvantaged. And by that, I mean they don't take advantage of this kind of thing enough. This is, and to get to this room, you need to do a speed booster jump, which is this, this is the only time you're required to do it in the game. You might have to do it for some missile expansions, I don't know, I haven't 100% this game since 2007. I'm not sure if there are any problems to do that, but then again, the speed booster in Super Metro looks a lot cooler, and it, with the physics it works a lot better for the jumping, so that may be why, and wow, that background art looks awesome, I never noticed that before. Yeah, well, I'm actually, that's that's kind of odd. I've never looked at the backgrounds of this game. They're actually really cool. They remind me of the Metroid manga. Metro, the Metroid Zero Mission manga, of course. <laughs> I've yet to read the 1986, I think it was, one. I don't remember. And, uh, by the way, when I said back in, uh, part one that Metroid 1 came out in 1987, that's its American release. I think it came out in 86 in Japan. And map room. Yeah. Hmm. Norfair, I think, is by far the largest area in every Metroid game that takes place on Zebus, which is just Metroid 1 and Super Metroid. It is by far the largest one. Especially in Super Metroid, considering it has like, what, three areas to it? Now we have this weird part of Norfair where everything's made up of bubbles, which reminds me of both Gemini Man stage from Mega Man 3 and something else. Oh, that's right, it reminds me of that exact same area in Super Metroid. Um, Japan, why the tentacles? Why, why, why? Anyway, don't go through that door just yet. Go down here for that power up we were originally sent down here for. We're going to take care of another one of these guys. Which are pathetically easy because I never only really at this point to start using missiles against them. And now we get the wave beam. Like most Metroid games and like Mega Man, it allows you to shoot through walls. I don't know why, but it does. <laughs> And again, it's, Ninten it's Nintendo and video games. They have their own logic to them. And that allows us to take down that guy with no problems. To be honest, I do like this a lot better than having the ice beam equipped. Well, having just the thing build up for it with the just the ice beam because now if we can kill something in one hit, it will die. It doesn't freeze. And now we're back in this kind of cave area with these things. These things are called, I think, the Kirugiru. No idea what that means, but they they have ever been strange to me. So this one you just have the bomb below it. I used to have trouble doing this when I was little. I don't know why. But this is the reason I brought up Krokemeyer earlier because these guys fight. L Kind of like him, where you, they can chop, where you have to use your missiles, to, or in this case, beam, to put them back. And shoot up myself there, and get another energy tank. Run all the way back, so you can send speed boost, so we can progress to the next area. Mm. 
save room, which I do not use. And now we see that this one seems to be petrified, but no, it turns out that's actually some sort of cocoon, I, gu I guess. Maybe do that or shed skin. And now, f for those who played Super Metroid, remember the spore spawn boss fight? This is the ensnared Kirugiro, who shares a lot with the spore spawn from Super Metroid, even the battle theme is a remix of it. Which, if you listen to the theme carefully, you can hear some sort of mosquito, I don't know why. As we can clearly see, this thing is starting to grow some sort of legs. Hmm, probably nothing. And when we destroy the, ten the tentacles, it suddenly turns red and right, oh, blue. Red, it's going three times faster, it's the red comet. Uh, <laughs> and what the... what's that? Anyway, if you like this part, rate, comment, subscribe, and as Ridley forebodingly lands on the planet, have a good day, everyone. And see you next episode.